jab has probably done enough. The two of them wander almost groggily back to their corners, and who can blame them? Si on veut le fight, on va avoir une chance d'avoir le fight, ça me prend les deux derniers rounds en ligne. Il va falloir qu'il se mette du score un peu là-dedans, mon chum. Il a perdu son cœur. Et encore une fois, Phenomenal exchanges. There was our top of cut I was talking about. Duke landed flush. It was a good shot by Pascal, but that was his only success for the round. After that was Froch with them little sneaky jabs that he likes to throw. Easier. Keep a rhythm. Chin down. He's going to get desperate. He'll have a swing up. Then he's going to tie. All right. Give me two rounds, real style. Chin on your chest. Let's work your way now. In a rhythm. Then long jab to the right hand. Two rounds. Come on. This is the sort of fight where wise heads at ringside are all looking at each other and saying, "How have you got it? Who's winning the fight?" Most people are saying that Frotch has got it by maybe two or three. But that is just. In some cases, the view of people who are consumed by home bias and a wish to see Frotch win it. What matters is the judges, the men from Montenegro, from Mexico, and the United States. If it goes the distance, how are they going to score it? Well, Frotch doing the right thing in this round. Beautiful jab. Knocked Pascal's head right back with that jab, and that's what wins this fight for me over the down the stretch. Is that jab from Frotch? If he can just keep popping the jab, not get too involved. Don't go right hand happy. Frotch has twice had to go the 12 round distance. Pascal's done it on three occasions. It's starting to look as though it could go right down to the wire. This one, well, the left hand right hand combination again makes Pascal look a little bit groggy. A little bit of a complaint to the Italian referee from Carl Frotch. I'm afraid in the cacophony here at ringside, not a prayer of telling you what it was. Oh, big right hand from Pascal! That was a really good shot from the Canadian. And it landed flush, and Frotz just took it. I don't know where he summoned up a punch like that from this late in the fight. That right eye is giving Pascal trouble. He's wincing in there, John, he's wincing in there. Closing the eye, squeezing it tightly shut. He's up on his toes. Bit of kidology from Pascal. Oh, good shot from Frox. And another one. And Pascal bravely comes back with hooks of his own. Frox allowing himself to get dragged into that toe-to-toe -to -toe exchange. This is a grueling, savage fight at times. It's untidy. It's sloppy. But, you know, we're so late into the fight, these guys want to win so bad. It evokes memories of that first encounter all those years ago at the NEC in Birmingham between Chris Eubank and Nigel Benn. It's had that sort of ferocity, and that is some big thing to say, I tell you. Momentarily, Frox choosing to go southpaw, and Pascal staggering forward drunkenly once more. Pascal had that good 15 second or 20 second flurry. And both of them are so tired. Last seconds of the 11th, and Frotz getting the better of that exchange again. The Nottingham crowd roar on the hero and sense that their man might now be just three minutes away from the title. Well, what a fight this has turned out to be. I think people who really knew their boxing knew this was going to be something very special, and it has turned out to fulfil every expectation. It really hasn't disappointed. For me, this fight's had everything except the knockdown. It's ebbed and flowed every which way. But for me now, Frotch, I've got him a couple of rounds up, just needs to stay calm, stay tight, bounce his way to a nice round, and he gets the championship. There's Carl's mum leading the cheering, and his girlfriend sitting there at ringside. Yeah. And Carl yeah. Frotch may be three step minutes step away the from the world title Corners on a first step towards the superstar and the graves.
Pascal will still second believe down. he can turn it around. But Frobst has bossed the second half of this fight by and large. What a fight. It's one of those where at times it's no exaggeration to say it has been a privilege to watch it. Displays of naked bravery from both men. Well, this is where home advantage really pays dividends. You're in the final round, you're in front of your own people. You can smell, taste, feel victory. And these two are going at it again. What a fight it is. In the final round, John, they're still winging away. Somebody still wants to knock out. The shouting of Frocks in his corner to box, box. Just work on the jab and do that. Work behind your boxing skills. Don't get into that macho brawl. There's a little bit of a skirmish on the other side of the Atlantic later on tonight. It's going to have to go some to match this. You know, you really couldn't blame Dutch for getting on his bike and boxing his way in this last round. He must know he's a couple of rounds up, but still he goes for the knockout. Still he forces Pascal to fight, to stand and trade. The chants and the songs begin. Is this to be the man who is to become the dominant figure in this division, just as Joe Calzaghe has been? Referee telling Frotchoff for pulling his man down. I'm not sure that's justified. I think there might have been as much tiredness from Pascal, who's really lurching forward and leaning into his shots now. Yeah, both boxers now have spaces show the, the scars of battle but it's Frotch who's putting in a grandstand finish Pascal, Pascal has tre displayed tremendous bravery and great credit here has fought superbly at times and if he is to have lost he's young enough to come again but that's how we see it remember but you'll have your own idea watching at home and it all depends on the judges one minute to go, less. Pascal much more tired than Frotch. They're both desperately tired, both sucking it up. But for me, Frotch just winning this last round, just willing himself on. 7,000 people will, land, will rise in acclamation of this in the closing seconds as the two end the fight as they began, winging in colossal shots, somehow managing to force themselves forward and throw yet more. This has not been the prettiest fight, but it's in its way, this has been a classic. And what a fight! Punches off to the bell. Both men believe they could have won it. Team Pascal celebrates, the Frotz team celebrates, and all around the Trent FM arena, every single person is on their feet, applauding something which, from the world of boxing, was very, very special indeed. A superb fight. Breathtaking fight. Well, the, the crowd are shouting easy, but it was anything but easy. Froch has had to work really extremely hard for victory. We don't I, know yet, well, Duke. No, we, we don't, don't know. We don't. I believe he's won. That's just my opinion. But I just think that, you know, he done so well from about round eight on. He pulled it out. He's shown a champion's heart. He's being congratulated by his promoter, Mick Hennessy, as Carl Froch and now being hugged by his brother and the other brother. Great family scene, they think they've done enough. And others making their way up. That's his mum who's got onto the ring apron now. There'll be a few celebrations and that's the lady of Carl Frotch's life. Pascal waving to the crowd, drawing the jeers. He thinks he's won it. He's certainly got no disgrace in defeat if he has been vanquished here. And Karl Frotz, what a performance. He has proved emphatically for me that he is, in every sense, the genuine article. Barry McGuigan has it by four rounds for Karl Frotz. There are a few rounds where I wouldn't like to separate them. There's so many people up there. That's Mum. She's happy. She thinks that her proud son is now world champion.
Karl Frotz must have won that last round. Final score from Duke McKenzie, we'll give you that in a moment. Barry's given it by four rounds to Karl Frotz, and Duke has got it by five. Five rounds.